right? Smart cyberphysical systems you can bet your life on. This is an aspirational title in the spirit of Bill Sherlis's earlier remarks. I, we already live in a world where thermostats and lights learn to go on and off, where robots clean our houses and where connected cameras uh, monitor our babies while we're at work. And we can imagine the world tomorrow where we'll be controlling and programming these devices through natural user interactions, through speech, through gesture, and through touch. Self-driving cars will roam our streets. Drones will take video in places we can't reach and deliver payloads in places we don't want to go to. Our contact lenses will continuously inform our doctors of our blood glucose level. Forests and farms, buildings and bridges are smart, will be more intra-connected and interconnected. Robots will be our pets, our co-workers, that's Manuela and her cobot, and they'll be our caretakers. Those with special needs will have new user experiences that are currently out of their reach. What is common to all of these systems? They have a computational core that interacts with the physical world. Cyber physical systems are engineered systems that require tight conjoining and coordination between the computational and the physical. And there are trends that are coming or already here in cyber physical systems that we should be aware of. First, cyber physical systems will be smarter and smarter. And more and more of this smarts, more and more of the intelligence will be in software. And germane to this particular workshop, a lot of that smarts, a lot of that intelligence is a course coming from algorithms from artificial intelligence and machine learning. And more and more of these systems are going to be interconnected. That's the promise of IoT. And there are many kinds and new kinds of flows of data among these systems. Another important trend is that we need to be thinking about designing these systems from day one in the context of human behavior and social norms. Now, for the purpose of this workshop, I'm going to only talk about the smartness in these cyber physical systems that's coming to us and the fact that the smartness is coming from AI and machine learning. So what could go wrong in these cyber physical systems? Well, planes crash, cars crash, trains crash, and drones crash. So how do we protect ourselves from these kinds of failures? Especially when we're running software that's implementing, that's implementing algorithms from AI and machine learning. So what I want to do is talk about, from a technical point of view, two kinds of safety challenges from the formal methods community, the formal methods perspective. First is reasoning about the continuous and the discrete at the same time. We need models, logic, logics, and languages that allow us to do this kind of reasoning. And second is reasoning about uncertainty, which we've heard a lot about this morning. So let me, in just a few slides, go, go through very quickly the essentially how much progress we've made on the first front which is reasoning about continuous and discrete at the same time. So already 20 years ago, with work by Tom Hensinger and many other colleagues in the community, we have models that we can use to represent these kinds of what are called hybrid systems. So the hybrid automata model that Tom Hensinger is very well known for allows us to reason about the continuous and discrete, where in a particular single state, you describe the behavior of the system in that state using sets of differential equations over continuous variables. And then you take these discrete state transitions from one state to the other. So for example, 
And by the way, this is his first example in his tome that he wrote on hybrid automata. It's representing a thermostat which goes on and off. So it has two states. It's on or off. The continuous behavior is described, as I mentioned already, in terms of differential equations. Here, they're just flow conditions. And then the jump condition implies that, in this particular case, the heater can go on as soon as the temperature falls below 19 degrees. This is in Celsius. Um, and then there are a ways to state state invariance. For instance, this implies, the state invariant implies that at the latest, it will go on when the temperature falls to 18 degrees. And so, over the, obviously, 20 years, there have been many, many models based on hybrid automata or hybrid systems, logics, and tools that people have developed that allow us to reason about the continuous and discrete. Some of the tools I mentioned here um, came out of Carnegie Mellon, in fact, um, like Checkmate and Sagar Plus is counterexample abstraction and refinement applied to hybrid systems. So this is very, very, um, a very old technology that's been used for many kinds of systems, including biological systems. So this is one approach for modeling and understanding the continuous and discrete at the same time. Another approach is to actually use logics. And here I'm going to call out one particular logic, differential dynamic logic, invented by, again, a faculty member here at Carnegie Mellon, Andre Plotzer. And in, what's nice about this particular logic is it allows you to um, make statements in the operational part, the hybrid programming part of the logic, uh, 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 just writing differential equations. And then you can make typical logical assertions. For instance, this one says this property P will be true in every reachable state of the run, of, uh, of any run of this program A. And similarly, this says there will be some state um, in some run of the program A where that property P will hold. These for alls and eventually come from the family of temporal logics. And so this particular logic has been used to reason about a train control, um, car traffic, and air traffic control. And there comes a tool called Chimera with this particular logic. I'm not going to say more about this, because we fortunately have a panelist, Sarah Luce, who's going to talk a lot more about this. Sarah was Andre's PhD student here at Carnegie Mellon, and she's now at Google. So that's reasoning about the continuous and discrete. What about reasoning about uncertainty? Well, again, in the past, up until pretty recently, um, the way in which the formal methods community would typically reason about uncertainty is to use non-determinism. So any particular, for, from any particular state, you can go to possibly many other states. Any one of them would be legitimate. And typically, if you wanted to reason about failure, you would, for every single state, implicitly have a state transition that will get you to some state called failed or unknown. So at any particular state, there was always another state transition you could take that non-deterministically that would get you into that failed state. And then there are a lot of um, semantics and, and, and logics and models that talked about who gets to determine whether you take that non-determinist transition or not. Is it an internal choice? or this choice done by the environment, and so on and so forth. But what we realize, I think, especially um, when we can tease apart the reasons for uncertainty, that non-determinism non -determinism was too coarse a way to handle uncertainty. And what we wa wanted to do was determine a little more uh, precisely what the likelihood of a particular state transition would be. And if, once you talk, start talking about likelihoods, then you bring in probabilities. And, you, and I neglected to say earlier, what are the sources of uncertainty? Well, first, there's Mother Nature. 
So hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, avalanches, we can't, right now, we can't predict when they're going to happen. But they could happen, and we better build our systems to withstand those kinds of failures. The other source of uncertainty is, of course, malicious actors. So we've got security, cybersecurity, we have to wear our cybersecurity hat to um, design systems to withstand malicious attacks. And there are, are other sources of uncertainty um, that I'm going to get to, but one last one is, of course, the system itself could be made of faulty components or components that fail. So we all, uh, for, for a long time, of course, in systems engineering and hardware engineering and so on, we build in, um, we make our system reliable by using redundancy, uh, knowing what the likelihood of failure will be for any particular hardware component. It's much harder to do that for software. But anyway, how do we reason about uncertainty if we're not going to use non-determinism, which is a little too coarse, then probabilities come to play. And again, for many years, the formal methods community have looked at things like probabilistic automata, probabilistic model checking that you can use over these automata, probabilistic logics that can, you can use to specify the properties that you want of such automata. Um, and I think what, what is most exciting to me is that it's a new emerging area which is called probabilistic programming. The idea about probabilistic program, which is so exciting, is that you have normal program variables whose values are drawn from probability distributions. So just imagine, especially the faculty in the audience, just imagine teaching your undergraduates how to program in these programming languages, where not only are the types of your variables, booleans and arrays and queues and stacks and so on, but they're drawn from their probability distributions. So the idea behind this is to, uh, the mantra that now that people are using is to democratize machine learning, democratize ML. And I really want to call out Kathleen Fisher for her very early days as a DARPA program manager created the PAML pro, uh, program, which John Launchbury mentioned this morning, which is probabilistic programming and machine learning. And, the, uh, and it was, I really, um, I got this mantra, this idea of d democratizing machine learning from Kathleen. So she's another panelist in this session. She's going to talk about a different DARPA program. <laughs> but I wanted to point out her, I wanted to credit her for this. So I think there's something really afoot here in terms of probabilistic programming. So now what I want to do in my remaining time is to talk a little bit about a new project, in fact, uh, one that is going on at Microsoft Research. Um, coincidentally, it's called Safe CPS, Safe Cyber Physical Systems. And it uses as its platform drones. And one thing that this, the researchers in this project did was to tease apart the different layers of abstraction in a particular, say, cyber physical system and say, what can we say about each of the layers? And then what can we say once we put all the layers together? So for instance, we, we minimally at the bottom want to assure that our operating, systems is, operating system is correct or, and safe. And so we actually have a verified real-time operating system kernel that we developed at Microsoft Research. And then you have to worry about the sensors on the system um, because the sensors can fail. And also the data that's coming in from the sensors can be noisy, can be in, in, uh, incomplete. It can be, uh, if you have multiple sensors, they can have inconsistent readings and so on. Of course, it's correct control. Um, that's the whole essence of any kind of cyber physical system. Um, but there are going to be more sources of uncertainty that I'll get to. And finally, at the highest level, we really do bring in our AI colleagues. Because at the highest level, you want this drone to go from A to B. And you need to plan a path for the drone to go from A to B. And by the way, you don't want it to run into people or buildings or fall down from the sky. 
So this work um, is very recent work. 2016, it was just presented by Dorsa, who's sitting on the second row here, the Berkeley graduate student who worked with us last summer um, with a researcher, Ashish Kapoor. Um, and they, let me, let me just outline what they did. First of all, you take your usual um, control system and you want to optimize, you want, uh, you want optimal control, so you want to minimize the cost of deviation from where you are, the reference, and some cost and control. So you're basically minimizing this function. And you, this is typical control theory and optimization. But what's new here is we want to subject this system and this optimization to some safety property. So this is really what's new. And uh, the paper presents a new kind of temporal logic called probabilistic signal temporal logic that allows you to express some property that's some derivative of a temporal logic which I'll show in the next slide um, for any given trajectory of that drone. So x is going to stand for the state variables in that drone and u stands for the control variables. And so you have for any trajectory described by the model of the system, you want to make sure it satisfies the safety property. So as an example, this is taken from your paper, Dorsa, um, or your presentation. Um, so here we want, to, so there's a little drone flying, and the objection, uh, objective is to get to the point 110. And the purple that you see there is the ceiling. So the idea is avoid the ceiling. Don't hit the ceiling then you'll be safe. And what's new about this logic is, yes, we have this um, optimization, uh, minimization problem, and we want to subject it to this safety property. And yes, of course, we want to subject it to a safety property on the control variables, so we want, don't want it to roll too much, or yaw too much, um, or uh, what's the other axis? Pitch. Okay, but this is the interesting part. This is a Bayesian classifier. So you can see where now the marriage of machine learning and verification has really come together. Because in the middle of this long predicate is truly machine learning classifier. And what, we, what they do is they train the classifier, say, on lots of uh, images, um, you're, you're near the wall, you're near the ceiling, and so on. And then the drone has access to this classifier to determine whether it's too close to the wall or too close to the ceiling. And so I'm not going to go into the particular logic, but you can see that there are two beautiful things about this particular uh, logic. First of all, it actually, the drone learns and updates its model as it's flying. And the other is, this is very compositional. Uh, if you look at the logic, you can have a classifier for any different kind of um, variable or latent variable that you want, and they all compose very nicely. So since Dorsa is in the audience, you can ask her all the technical details. OK, let me just close and say, oh, let me, uh, one last thing, just to tease you. Where is this going? Well, I already said that what excites me is this, all this work going on in probabilistic programming. And what are the inputs to a probabilistic program? Well, first of all, oops, oops. First of all, we have the planners coming from the AI community. So blue, uh, red paths and so on. Those are the trajectories. Then we have Bayesian graphical models that we get from, say, training the classifiers in the, the vision system of the drone. And then we have these prop properties that we want, like don't hit the wall or don't hit the ceiling, specified in some kind of high-level logic. And we can actually encode all that into a programming language um, and, and write a probabilistic programming incorporating these safety properties. And then what you can do is actually do some Bayesian inference over the, those programs and determine whether you're going to run safely or not. So this is 
this is coming. This is the future. So what I want to do is just point out this irony. Because I come from the formal methods community, and all of a sudden um, uh, 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 we're, we're talking to the machine learning and AI community. So from my point of view, to prove, to prove the safety of cyber physical systems, we need to deal with uncertainty. I already said that was one of the two challenges. To reduce this uncertainty, cyber physical systems are outfitted with more and more sensors to make them smarter, to set their environment, and to monitor their internal state. But to interpret these signals from a multitude of these sensors, we rely on AI and statistical machine learning and optimization techniques more generally. But these techniques give us only an approximation of the real world, of the external world and also the internal state of the system that then determines its next state. So it's an approximation. What does that mean? These approximations add inherently add another dimension of uncertainty. <laughs> so that's, I think, ironic. OK, let me just close and say to build smart cyber physical systems that people can bet their lives on, we need safe software, standard program verification. We still need that. We need safe control. It's a cyber physical system, so we need to reason about control systems. So that, thank you, Claire, for all your hard work. Um, and then safe learning, which is really the new aspect to the, certainly the formal methods community. And the last thing I want to say is, I mentioned my two other panelists. I want to mention the last one, Anna Pomdata, for completeness. He's going to talk about accountability um, and explanatory um, needs of explanation of the machine learning algorithms. So thank you very much.